the the more you work on these projects, the the better they'll they'll be, and the better your skills will be. So I opened up this image I know I want to use in Photoshop, and then I want to understand its size. So I went to image image size, and I see that it's 19 inches by 26 inches, but it's only 72 pixels per inch. So if I uncheck, this is important, if I uncheck this box on image size that says resample, that means no matter what I do, it's going to stay at 1,371 pixels by 1,920 pixels. But I can say I want that to be within 8 by 10 inches instead of 19 by 26. So as I put a width of 8 in there, Notice that it's going to automatically change the height and automatically change the resolution. And if I want it to be print quality, I need the resolution to be 300. So I type that in, and that changes my image, which was 20-something inches, to now being only 6 by 4 inches. But that's still big enough for, for how I'm going to use this. Now I can go to image canvas size and make it in inches 8 by 10 inches. Or bigger than that, I'll do 10 by 10 inches, a square. And then I have my image, and it's the right resolution. So that's how you can do it starting with the image. The way most of us are doing it is we start a new file. We make it the right size, the right canvas size. So this image, you can always check under image size, is already, um, for some reason, 8.57 by 8.57 by 350. I'm going to resample that and make that 10 inches by 10 inches by 350. As long as it's at least 8 by 10 and at least 300 pixels per inch, you're good. Okay, now I'm going to take that. And if you ever need to center it on the screen, just hit Command-0. And that will shrink it to fit on the screen. Now, I'm just going to drag and drop that image onto it. Now, here's, here's what's weird about when you drag and drop. It's going to give you this big kind of blue X over it. That's because it's what's called a smart object. A smart object is like a website resource. It means that it's going to your folder and finding that image, in this case a PNG image, and it's loading it into Photoshop, but it's not saving it into Photoshop. <laughs> and it allows you to place it. You can use the corners to immediately scale it. Because notice, as it came in, it, it filled up my space, even though we know it only has the resolution to do this. So it was already growing a little bit. So I'm going to place it, because I didn't hit return, it, it lost it. But I'm going to shrink it a little bit, just put it towards the middle. And then in order to place it and get rid of that X to do anything else, I have to hit return. Once I've hit return, notice that now that layer has a little icon that has like a black box in it in the corner. That's because it's a smart object thumbnail. In order to erase from that image, because I don't want the little kid's face necessarily, um, I need to right click and rasterize that image. If I don't do that, so I'll do Command Z to undo that, and I then try to erase something like his collar, and I hit delete, it's going to give me a warning because you can't edit from smart objects because smart objects are loading from another source. Right? So what do you do? You first have to right click and rasterize, and then you can delete. Let's bring in sunglasses. Again, comes in as a smart object, but I can stretch it, make it bigger. This one had plenty of resolution. If I'm ever worried, I can zoom in and see what those pixels are really doing. Right, and then hit Command uh, 0 to zoom out again. Hit Return to place it, but then in order to erase, I have to right click and say Rasterize. Now for this one, I want to erase everything except the sunglasses and maybe the nose and mouth. So instead of erasing or instead of uh, using the lasso around what I want to 
erase, I'm going to lasso around what I want to keep. Right? And then instead of hitting delete, if I hit delete, it will delete the exact wrong thing. I am instead going to hit command J. Command J is one of the most important shortcuts in Photoshop. It will duplicate your selection exactly on a layer on top. So command J will put that layer exactly as I selected it, right? And that allows me to take the layer that it comes from and just delete that whole layer. So now I have two layers. The problem is they don't have just black lines. They have white and black lines. So one is obscuring the other. And this is in the directions, but how do I make it so I can see all the lines on top of each other? I have to change their layer blending mode to multiply. And if I change that for all of them and I have a white background, I'm going to start to see how they layer up on top of each other. And I'm very close to getting like a kid Hitler image, which is interesting. Not exactly what I want. So the other thing we're going to do besides bringing and layering images is we're going to be altering them, stretching them, scaling them, flipping them, and erasing from them. The best way to do that, especially once they're rasterized, is to just hit Command T. I'm telling you a lot of shortcuts because operationally that's what you're going to use. But if you go to Edit and you scroll down to Free Transform, that is this command. Yeah. Photoshop does this nice thing where it teaches you its shortcuts as you go. And again, we're going to learn through repetition. So Command J is to duplicate, and then Command T is to Free Transform. When you free transform, you'll get a box. I'm not sure why it is in your computers, which are actually newer than my computer, but sometimes the box will be invisible until you click on the image. I haven't figured out why that is. It's kind of a glitch. Hopefully that will be changed when we go to the new machines. But if you hit Command T, the box will be there. You just click on it, and then you'll get these, what's called the transform box, which allows you to do things like rotate, stretch, and if you want to uh, distort it, you can hold down shift, and that allows you to stretch it in any dimension. We'll get to more specialized versions of that, but for now, that's going to get you started. To do the more specialized versions of transform, you right-click inside, and then you get special tools like Warp is one of my favorites, where you can kind of tug it in certain places. And if I want certain lines to line up, like the nose and the glasses and the eyes, I can position it just right with this Warp tool. And then I hit Return. Whenever you do a transform, you have to hit Return to, to lock it in. What about this initial one? I, I want my cartoon jumble, my line art jumble, to be free-floating. So I don't want there to be a necessarily an up or a down. So I can play with where that hair is. And I can play with how much is showing in terms of the, the eyes, mouth, ears, etc. And at any time, I can kind of lasso and delete. All right. In a few minutes... Once this video is over, we're going to have a presentation by um, the director of our social media digital marketing program. Some of you are in that program. Some of you are already in classes with him. But let's bring in our other resources. So I definitely want one of my knives, probably both of them. So I'm just going to do these steps pretty quickly. Bring it in. Size it to where you think it might be helpful. Hit return. And then we're going to right-click and rasterize, especially true for something with watermarks like this. Rasterizing doesn't only allow you to erase. I'll just show you that really quickly. But rasterizing also allows you to change its colors in what we call adjustments. So we're doing black and white, but the adjustment I need is on levels. And that's probably the only adjustment you're going to need for this exercise. Because what we want to do is we want to make the darks darker and we want to make the, the lights lighter. It's basically brightness contrast. 
on this histogram, I can see all of the, the highlight white pixels, and I can limit them using this white slider so that in the whites, the brightest white is what is the, the lightest gray in the image originally. So you can see how that gets rid of all of it in the background. And then for the darks, I can take those grays that are overlapping the dark image, and I can darken those in. And so that will get rid of the watermark for me. Then I can say OK. And then how do I get it so I can see this just as line art as I'm composing it? I'm going to change its blending mode like I did for the other layers to multiply. And then how do I work with it, rotate it, stretch it, scale it? I use Command-T to free transform. Let's bring in the other knife, one without watermarks. Now, sometimes when you do the free transforming and you rotate it, something will be left over that was outside of the canvas when you first adjusted it, right? And so we'll, we'll clean up all that stuff before we finish this. And we have the first half hour of next class before we post it. And you can tinker with it on your own, just following some of those directions in the canvas. So I need to rasterize this, change it to multiply mode, and then Command-T to size it and play with it. Actually, I don't mind that placement. That might be interesting. I like how it frames the eye. Now let's get some cigarettes in there in this portrait of wayward youth. And again, we don't need to have any particular up or down. It's a free floating kind of meteor of lines. And as long as your resolution is good enough, you should be able to return to it and make uh, various decisions. In cleaning this up, I'm going to erase behind the uh, erase the hair as the blade overlaps it. I'll erase some of these overlaps to clean it up. But right now, I'm just trying to get the, the general placement of at least five elements. And I have those now. I want to get at least one more greasy hairstyle in there maybe another pack of cigarettes. So another way you can transform is you can right click and you can just flip right to left or top to bottom and of course rotate. So by bringing in the smart objects from your folder, it will already give you that transform box without having to hit command T. But then I still want to rasterize so I can erase from it later and I still want to change it to multiply, especially if there's any white in the image. And then this will be my last one, because I wanted to show you that sometimes what looks like black in an image search is not black compared to the other images you're using. For this, I'm going to hold down Shift while I transform it so that I can warp it or drag it, distort it in different ways. Rotate it. So it's starting to look kind of militaristic. Now, how do I make that black match the other blacks? There are a variety of ways, but before I want to mess with it too much, I need to rasterize it. And then, just like I got rid of the watermark, I'm going to go to Image Adjustment Levels. And you see how the, the dark pixels on this are not all the way at the end. So I take that, that black triangle limit, and I drag that to the end, and then that will be as dark as everything else. So this technically meets all the requirements of the project. It's just not refined yet. You know, there's things I need to erase and play with and, and make it better. And I'll be doing that at the beginning of next class. But right now, this has at least five elements. They're all high enough resolution that uh, we're good to go. So how do we save it before next class? We go to File. We go to Save As. I always want you to use Save As when you start a project so you can put in a name. It's up to you to organize your files. I'll give you examples, but I'm always going to recommend because I know which semester I did, it, I did this demo for. And then I'm going to save it to the desktop. I always recommend you save to the desktop in this lab so you can see it on that big 
gray empty desk. Uh, 